everybody welcome back to another episode of the gx wrestlecast we're on episode 158 of my wrestling recap show and we are doing ourselves a pay-per-view review we got wwe's bad blood taking place in atlanta hotlanta what is that georgia or whatever regardless we got ourselves a pay-per-view and um maybe not one of the biggest ones but regardless Um, one thing I need to point out before we get into the review, I was watching this on Sportsnet, and, uh, my goodness, was there ever some streaming issues going down with the Sportsnet? I don't know if it was just Sportsnet, or if it was on the side of WWE. My wife, uh, uh, her cousin was watching the show as well, and he was dealing with the same issues, but we're both on Sportsnet. Uh, what was happening was, like, it kept... Like, the audio would cut out literally every three seconds. It would be like a, uh, like, just a, just a little cutout. Just enough so that you would notice it. The stream itself, like, the video was still going pretty smoothly, but this audio just kept cutting out constantly. And that went on throughout the whole entire pre-show. And for probably the first, like, 30 to 45 minutes of the actual show, this proceeded to happen. And then it just disappeared. But, like, fuck, man. Like, I know that Sportsnet is a terrible app. There's been tons of problems with it. I have tons of complaints about Sportsnet. It's extremely expensive. The quality and the streaming is just not there. Blacking out a lot of my hockey games. Just not impressive. So uh, that was some bullshit right there. So boo on Sportsnet Plus. Boo. But not a boo is Samantha Irving. Absolutely crushing America the Beautiful. At least I think she did because the audio kept cutting out every fucking three seconds. So, you know, it sounded super choppy, but I bet that Samantha Irving crushed it. So I'm going to give her a thumbs up. And then we get the hosts, Naomi, Bianca, Belair, and Jade Cardgill. Welcome Atlanta to the show. You know, I don't... (laughs) The host, like, it really didn't add anything to the show. They literally, I don't think they ever show up again throughout the show, our our so-called hosts. But hey, it's cool. And if you didn't notice, it was all women of color, which is awesome. Naomi, Belair, and Cardgill. What what I have noticed, I mean, it's it's pretty glaring, but there has not been a lot of black performers, African-American performers, or just any people of color, really performers in the WWE they have tried it's not that they haven't tried there's been tons of attempts but I think now more than ever not only with the women but the women of color just really getting a platform finally with the WWE and it's great man it's fucking awesome to see I still don't think it's quite there yet where the women they're not quite on the same um platform as the men i'm not saying that they're not as good i'm saying they just don't get as much time as the men still it's still not as even but it is extremely nice to see like i was watching back in the i started watching in the uh what the fuck is that called the ruthless aggression era and women were just treated like fucking garbage back then and the whole divas era and everything man so me starting there women's wrestling and just uh wrestling uh diversity has just improved so much since i started watching so thumbs up for that thumbs up for that let's get into the show now and they start off with a bang hell in a cell we are starting with that drew mcintyre versus cm punk drew smashes punk with the chair pins punk's head to the steel steps with his boot just squishing his head like it drew misses with a wrench Punk drives that wrench into Drew's forehead. Pretty nasty. Drew tries to impale Drew's eye into the table legs. Like, oh my god. So, getting pretty gruesome. Claymore out of nowhere on the floor and then torpedoes Punk into the cage. Fuck yeah, that was sick. Thumbs up for that. Punk is busted open bad. Like, real bad. He's got the crimson mask, if you will. Spanish commentary randomly can be heard now, and oh my, was it ever funny. Like, we can hear both the commentary, and then it just goes quiet for a second. You can hear the Spanish commentary go, wow. (laughs) It's just, oh, it was so fucking good. So I I wasn't even bothered by that, but yes, now we have two commentary teams 
fucking commentating on this match. Drew, uh, Drew, no, Punk, bonks Drew on the head with a toolbox multiple times, and that looked nasty. Thumbs up. McIntyre is now a bloody mess from that. Punk nails a GTS, sends Drew to the outside. McIntyre, another Claymore out of nowhere, gets a near fall. Punk locks in a sharpshooter, sharpshooter, on a blood-soaked McIntyre. Kind of uh, reminiscent of the Bret Hart and Steve Austin moment right there. That was pretty cool. Drew smacks Punk with a wrench to get out of the hold. McIntyre suplexes Punk to the floor through a freaking table. My goodness. Punk with a go-to-sleep out of nowhere gets a near fall. Drew hits the white noise onto the steel steps. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. Thumbs up. Punk with a sweet counter into the Anaconda Vice and just starts bashing in Drew's face with the wrench while he's got it locked in. Awesome. Drew with a classic low blow grabs a bag filled with bracelet beads. Uh, You know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Symbolic, if you will. The bracelet beads of of the feud between Punk and Drew McIntyre. McIntyre Claymore misses and he goes spying first into the steel steps that was horrific oh my oh his back is gonna be mangled after that one punk wraps a chain eventually around his knee he struggles but he gets it done puts beads into drew's mouth hits a go to sleep pins and wins wow hell of a way to start the show uh, see what i did anyway symbolic touches in this match were great the the beads the f- oh man good shit some very very nasty looking bumps from both Punk and, well, mostly Drew. Mostly Drew for sure. I loved the return of the blood in this match. It was perfectly done. That's how you do blood, man. A feud like this, you have to have blood. You have to have blood, and the blood was perfect. Brutality was on point. Like, you're trying to fucking blind a bitch. You're trying, like, man, yeah. You can absolutely feel the hatred. Take notes on this match, Wesley and Zack. This is how you display hatred in the ring. Sad they didn't leave the cage. I mean, I always get excited when they could bust through the walls or get out of the cage and start fighting on the outside. They didn't have to do that. It's just something I noted. It didn't take away from the match, but the fact that they kept it all in the ring was actually kind of impressive. 9 out of 10 for this match. Fucking awesome. Uh, Punk collapses on the floor. Medical and Adam Pierce run over to check on him. And Punk just says, I want to call my wife. All right, you go ahead. You call your wife right now if you want to. But we got more wrestling to get through. We got the WWE Women's Championship match up next. Nia Jax defends against Bayley. I can't remember if Tiffy was or wasn't out there initially. So I, I, I don't think Tiffy was there. Anyway, Bayley attempts to powerbomb Nia off of the ropes. Nia with a unique, let's call it unique Rana counter. It looked horrible. It was horrible. Uh, not, like Naya does uh, her version of a Hurricanrana. Uh, not very good. A late sell there from Bailey, but it made me laugh. So I don't know. Bailey with the elbow drop that connects. Naya powers out of Bailey's pin. Naya crashes into the steel steps pretty damn hard. Naya then power bombs Bailey onto the steps fairly gently, but then tosses Bailey into the barricade really, really hard. So. Kind of evens out. Naya accidentally squishes the referee, and that was a little bit of a mistake too. I think initially Naya like kind of fell on on Jessica Carr, the referee, but she was like, "No, nah, you didn't get me enough." So Bailey just kicks her in the head, and then Naya just fucking slams on top of the ref. So that that was a good recovery. Bailey hits the rose plant, but the referee is out cold. Tiffy runs down with her briefcase. Crowd going crazy. She smashes Bailey with a briefcase. Tiffy wakes up the referee, hands over the briefcase for a moment, kinda, just as Naya pops up to see Tiffy, giving the, the briefcase to the ref. So Naya's pissed. Naya and Tiffy argue. Bailey roll up. We get a super near fall right there. Tiffy distraction to Bailey. Naya able to hit a avalanche Samoan drop and the annihilator to retain. Poor Tiffy. Just trying to help and always ends up looking so bad in front of Naya. She wasn't trying to cash in. I knew when she ran out that wasn't going to be the intention. But uh, crowd thought so. They went freaking crazy. Uh, the match though, it did have some slip-ups throughout. The Rana, the ref bump. There was some 
some things that didn't go perfectly, but uh, the recovery on the knockout for the referee, that was really well done. I like that. Good effort from Bailey. She always works really good with Nia Jax. Solid match overall. The Tiffy fake cash in that definitely that got the biggest pop of the of the whole entire match. I feel like everyone was more focused on Tiffy coming out more so than the match, but eh, six out of ten, solid match. Now we got Finn Balor versus Damian Priest. Damian nails Finn with a loud anti air punch that sounded great. Priest counter into a broken arrow gets a near fall. Finn thrown over the table almost takes out Michael Cole. And then Carlito and McDonough arrive, distracting the referee and Priest. Finn dropkick nails the coup to Gracie. Uh, Priest kicks out. Finn delivers one too many stomps, gets caught by Damien, who hits the south of heaven, pins, and wins. Good performance from Finn and Damien. You know, some nice strikes. Judgment Day shenanigans are annoying, but inevitable at this point. This one just felt like a regular-ass match, man, that you would have seen on Monday Night Raw. Really... No bells or whistles, n- nothing really, man. Uh, 5 out of 10, just like there's nothing wrong with it, but yeah, very mid. And here comes Triple H in the ring for an announcement for Crown Jewel as the crowd audibly groans. Everyone's like, oh, oh, we're still doing this shit? Yes, we're still doing this shit. So Triple H says both brands, world champions, will face each other and the winner wins an obnoxiously large championship. Out comes the World Heavyweight Champion Gunther, who trash talks Sami Zayn some more. Gunther turns his attention to Bill Goldberg, who is in the front row. Gunther calls Bill a one-trick pony, and he wasn't actually Gunther's childhood hero. Get fucking torched! Uh, Goldberg is given the green light by his wife and son to go whoop some ass. Security and management stop Goldberg from getting seriously injured by Gunther. Sami Zayn out of nowhere with a sneak attack on Gunther. Goldberg celebrates in the ring because he did all he did all the work, right? He did everything. So yeah, you celebrate, you fuck. <sighs> all right, well, that was a, a waste of time. Nobody cares for Crown Jewel. And yeah, okay, so they're going to do a champions versus champion thing. All, all said and done, it's not going to really mean anything. But uh, yeah, Crown Jewel, everybody. Let's get excited for that. Women's World Championship match. It's Liv Morgan defending against Rhea Ripley with Dom in a shark cage. Liv and Dom arrive in a lovely lowrider. Ripley comes out. She places a toilet roll in the cage for Dom because he will be shitting himself when he gets risen above the ring. Ripley hot out of the gate, whipping Liv Morgan's ace. Morgan then targets Ripley's damaged leg. Rhea smash hard into the barricade with a rolling power bomb. Liv nails a top rope code breaker that looks spectacular. Thumbs up. Uh, Rhea with a mean razor's edge. Dom unlocked the door to the cage somehow. I guess he had a key and he picked the lock. Ripley destroying Liv Morgan in front of Dom nails a riptide, and then Dom slips out of the cage and he gets hung up by his feet. Holy shit! That scared the fuck out of me initially. I thought he fell out. Then he gets hung up. That was awesome. Thumbs up. Ripley goes to town on Dom like he's a freaking pinata with a kendo stick. Thumbs up for that. So Ripley goes to the ref. She's like, can I have a minute with Dom? He's like, you deserve that. Go at him. And she just beats the shit out of him with a kendo stick. Thumbs up. Raquel Rodriguez returns out of nowhere, interferes with the match, and the match is disqualified. Uh, Ah, that fucking sucks. Stiff fight, Ripley really having her way with Liv Morgan. That was great. Morgan, fantastic selling throughout. And Dom, hung up by his foot. That was freaking wicked. Um, Rodriguez, you know, unfortunate ending to this match. But Rodriguez, a good add to the Judgment Day. Would make a great enforcer for Liv Morgan whenever she gets into trouble. Overall, the match was eh, pretty good. 7 out of 10. Now we have Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu versus Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes in the main event. This is the main event, a tag team match for no titles, no stipulations, nothing. Tag team match, let's go. Big marching band performance for Cody's entrance. That was pretty cool. Roman says, hold my beer. He brings out a fucking orchestra for his entrance. Pretty cool. Fatu eats a disaster kick from Cody. Roman cuts off and... 
is grinded down by the bloodline for a very, very, very long time. Cody gets the hot tag, hits a Cody cutter, doesn't do a lot to fought to at all. Roman finally gets a hot tag, hits a Superman punched on Solo. Bloodline double super kick on Roman. Cody with a crossroads to fought to on the floor. Cody nails a big splash to fought to through the announce table. Roman Superman punch crowd going fucking nuts as he tries to hit the spear, but the bloodline arrive to attack Roman. Solo spears. Yeah, Solo spears Roman. We get a near fall there, and then a hooded person takes out the bloodline. Who is it? It's Jimmy Uso. Oh, snap, he's back. Roman nails a spear for the victory. Very old school tag team match, and not in the good way. Methodical is a nice way to put it. This was fucking boring. Big table spot from Cody was nice, but yeah, the the moments were better than like your standard tag team match, but this felt very much so like a very standard boring ass tag team match that you would get on a normal SmackDown, a normal Raw, really not a lot going on. Yes, it's nice to have Jimmy come back. Yes, they had a good table spot, but you'll get those table spots in the main event of a SmackDown as well. So like, really, I... I cannot get, like, I was so disappointed to see that they were going to put this as the main event match, not the Hell in a Cell match. Um, yeah, I, could, I can't ever get excited for a tag team match that has no titles on the line, nothing going on with it. It's just a, it's just a tag team match with, with some big name guys in it. Like, I hated this. Four and a half out of ten. Jimmy and Roman hug it out. Bloodline, meanwhile, are just beating the shit out of Cody Rhodes. Roman and Jimmy decide to go back and save Cody. Then out of nowhere, do you smell it? It's The Rock. He makes an appearance and that's all. He just stands there, doesn't say a fucking word, and the show ends. That's all, folks. Go home. But there's one more thing I need to touch on. Apparently after the show, some shit went down. uh, Not for real, but... uh, So Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens got into an altercation after the show. They were both um, backstage in, like, the, I don't know, parking lot area. And the crowds were filming them on purpose, obviously. But you can see them, you know, having a pretty heated argument over... And you can't really hear what they're saying then. Out of nowhere, Kevin just attacks uh, Cody, punches him, stomps on him, beats the shit out of him. Then they get separated. So, Kevin Owens has officially, looks like, turned heel on Cody Rhodes. So, we'll see where that goes. Uh, That's just something that I saw... Uh, well, actually, I was told about it. I didn't. I didn't even know about this. Someone at work told me that this that something went down. I need to see what happened, and I did. And that's that's what it was. So Kevin Owens looks like he's finally turning heel. That should be really interesting. The only thing that sucks is that you know we're talking about it at work, and no one really believes. Like I love Kevin Owens. Don't don't get me wrong. I love Kevin Owens. He's like probably top three favorite wrestler that is active right now in WWE. I don't think anyone's believing that Kevin Owens could is going to win the championship from Cody Rhodes. Like, it's just... That's kind of the, the thing that sucks when you have a champion like Cody Rhodes. Someone that's so undeniably the champion. You really can't... It's really hard to picture someone taking it off of Cody outside of a Roman Reigns. So when you have a feud going down with Cody that isn't Roman Reigns, it's kind of like, all right, we all know where this is going. Kevin is not going to win the championship, but... It should make for a very awesome feud. So I'm pretty excited. I would love it if Kevin could get a championship at some point, but I don't know if it's going to be this time, but that was cool. Now, for the entirety of the show, it was pretty fucking mid, man. That wasn't a very... It was a pretty mediocre show all said and done. Like I said, I I can't get excited for a fucking tag team match for your main event. No titles or anything like that. And they opened with the Hell in a Cell match, which was awesome, but also just deflated the whole entire show. Nobody was topping that match. No one. No one. So why did you put it on first? Like, there was no reason to put that on first when you know that's your that's your pinnacle match right there. And my buddy was super lucky. He was watching the pay-per-view, and the only match he watched was this one, and then he had to go do some shit. I'm like, brother, you barely missed a fucking thing. You watched the best match of the show. The rest of it was very much so a standard, like, raw There was not a lot going on there. So, yeah, man, I was pretty disappointed outside of the Hell in a Cell match. Show just 
went straight downhill after that. I mean, the cliffhanger ending with The Rock, like, yeah, The Rock shows up. Doesn't do anything, though. So, yes, you get a nice cliffhanger. What the Rock, what, what's Rock going to do now? What? what? Are, you on the, are you on Roman's side? Are you on Solo's side? I think, obviously, he's going to side with Roman, I would imagine. But uh, this wasn't a very good show, man. I was not feeling it. Five out of ten. Let me know what your favorite match is. Obviously, it's the Hell in a Cell match that was... The only match I feel like on this card that is pay-per-view worthy, like, with the feud and everything like that, like, yeah, that was awesome. So if you are going to watch the pay-per-view and you haven't yet, just watch the Hell in a Cell match and then, you know, you don't really have to watch the rest of it because not a whole lot you're missing right there. So not my favorite show of the year so far, probably the weakest one, I would say. And, uh, yeah, so let me know what you thought of the show. I didn't think very much about it outside the Hell in a Cell but, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with the Monday Night Raw. We'll see if Rock shows up. We'll see what's going on with that. And, obviously, they're going to have to address that Kevin Owens situation. That's probably going to be something they start off with. Like, oh, look what happened after the show, after Bad Blood, blah, 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 Kevin Owens. And then Kevin's going to come out and do some shit. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm pretty excited to see the fallout of the show. More so than I was to watch that show. And that's how she goes sometimes. Not every pay-per-view can be good. Crown Jewel announcement. Ugh. I don't even know what pay-per-view is next. I, I'm guessing maybe Crown Jewel, because that's the one they're talking about. But, I don't know. Crown Jewel definitely isn't as bad as it was the first couple of shows. It's gotten better. It's gotten at least watchable. But no one really gets all that excited about it, because it generally doesn't have a lot to do with actual storylines and things that are going on currently with the show. It's more of a just a spectacle for people in Saudi Arabia. It's like, we're trying to create new fans here, so it's like, oh, let's bring out Triple H, bring out The Undertaker, Hulk Hogan's here, everybody. And it's like, yeah, it's it's fun, but they're generally not that good. All right, so that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the WrestleCast, a pay-per-view episode. In terms of what else we got going on with the podcast this week, uh, if you haven't noticed, the NHL has started, actually. It started on uh, this week, that last weekend there with the Global Series. So we'll be talking about the beginning of the NHL season. Leafs kick off their season on Wednesday. That's going to be dope. Can't fucking wait. And yeah, baby, we got the uh, the horror-themed uh, episodes of the GamerCast are continuing on this month. Be on the lookout Friday for the newest episode of that. Not going to let you know what, what we're talking about, but it will be horror-themed, so be on the lookout. And of course, the WrestleCast will continue. Got another recap incoming and Wrestle Dream. Uh, AEW pay-per-view this weekend, so I'll have a pay-per-view review out for that as well. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. If you want to be even more awesome than you already are, make sure you're liking and reviewing the podcast. Tell 30 or 40 of your closest friends and family all that great stuff. There is a Twitter page if you want to follow along over there. I put up announcements as best as I can, and I upload all of these episodes to the YouTube channel, Gamer GX Videos. You can subscribe over there, follow along. Great place to drop a comment. You want a question answered live on the podcast. Anything about wrestling, hockey, or video games. Outside of that, I'm not an expert, but I'll try. And there's an email address as well. If you want to have a private conversation, my door is open for everyone and anyone. There we go, everybody. Let me know what you thought of Bad Blood. I didn't like it very much, but the Hell in a Cell match was dope. And we'll be back with Hamo. GX Plus Guest. <laughs>